Barnaby Jones, starring Buddy Epson, also starring Lee Merriweather, with guest stars Tim O'Connor, Brooke Bundy, Ramon Birai, Susan Howard, Jonathan Lippy. Tonight's episode, Death Leap. Doctor, I want to help you. Can you tell me your name? Leave me alone! Stay away from me!
Oh, Peter. Oh. 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 oh, my. It's such a beautiful car. Are you surprised? I just came outside and there it was. I thought it belonged to somebody else until I read your note. Oh, really? I really don't need all those things. You are going to spoil me. Well, I'm going to do my best anyway. Why not? You're the most important thing in my whole life. Your partner is awaiting us. <laughs> How about joining us? No, not right now. We've got a little work to do. I'll see you later. All right. Roy wouldn't do it. I know. How do you know, Miss Phillips? Because he just wasn't the type to kill himself. He was never depressed. Well, now, that's hard to say. You see people who go along, apparently, on top, and then one day they put a gun to their heads. But not Roy. He, he was up, and, and lately he was really up. He was so excited. Do you know why? Something about a, a new job. What kind of a job? I, I'm not sure exactly. What kind of work did Roy do? Roy did everything. You name it, he was a... He was a handyman, a, a gardener, groundskeeper, a, a carpenter. But most of all, he was a clown. Clown? You mean a clown? Uh, as in funny? As in, as in clown. He... Go to kids' parties and uh, supermarket openings, uh, hospital. Most of all, Roy liked to make people laugh. I think that's great. To be a clown. Grimaldi, Pagliacci, all the great clowns with their baggy clothes and bouquets of carrots. That was Roy. And their painted on smiles hiding all the sadness underneath. Roy was not sad. And he didn't kill himself. You're pretty sure of this, aren't you? Yes. You've got to help me prove it. You are the police for this? Well, I, I feel kind of silly going to the police. Where did Roy live? Uh, next to me in the canyon. I could show you. 
Let's go. This is nice. It's really very nice. It's almost a shame Roy's not here to see it. <laughs> almost, but uh, not quite, huh, Frank? The pie is always a little bit tastier when the pieces are bigger. <laughs> Besides, like you said, it was an accident. He lost his balance. That's right. How much do you think we're going to get? Well, it's impossible to say. You said that uh, new shipment alone was worth more than a million and a half. On the open market, not to a fence. Don't worry, I'll see if we get a good price. I'll make it soon. I don't like hanging around here any longer than I have to. Well, if you care to, I can always have your share forwarded to you. It's all right. I'll wait. It's always a pleasure to hear your voice. I'll have that money for you in a day or two. Oh, is that a day or two? Two. Two. Got it. I'm marking that down. Don't put me on now, Danny. This time it's for sure. Oh, <laughs> you've got a sure thing, huh, Peter? You know, gamblers pick up such interesting phrases. Now, you've got a sure thing. Big odds? I'm not gambling for this money. I certainly hope not. I marked down the number two in my appointment book, Peter. Let's see, that would be Thursday. Now, if you don't show up on Thursday... On Friday, I'm going to have to... You'll have it on Thursday. time for everything. Our mutual friend did say it was your first time, didn't he? It doesn't matter. Amateur or pro, I predict a real future for you. $425,000. They're worth almost two million. Not to me. Then there's no deal. Maybe I missed something. Ah, yes, a simple oversight. I think I can go 450. Five. Why quibble? I'll have to have cash. <laughs> you didn't expect me to give you a personal check, did you? I'll have to have a day or so to get the money. I was right about you. You have a future.
You would have liked him, Mr. Jones. He loved to make people laugh. Kid made him this. <laughs> I just can't get it out of my mind that clowns are traditionally melancholy. You still don't believe me, do you? I believe you were in love. Is he? Yes. You didn't tell me that he had actually been with a circus. He never mentioned it to me. I wonder what else he didn't mention. There's a, there's a delivery truck over at my house. I'll be right back. these three days ago to be delivered today. Sorry I had to run off on business. Be back tonight. Now we can get married. I love you, Roy. Did that sound like a man who could commit suicide? No. No, it surely didn't. But what was he doing out there on that ledge? No. Death by massive concussion. Funny about that right kneecap. Well, there were a lot of broken bones. Yeah, in the upper part of the body, but the upper part of the body is a heavy part of the body. It dictates a fall. Roy Hazen landed head first, right? Right. And how do you get a smashed right kneecap? Well, maybe it got twisted under him somehow. Does that satisfy you? Doesn't satisfy me. Thanks, Jim. Barnaby, what are you driving at? I don't know yet. Will you hold that, please? Hold that, Harry. Sorry I'm late. I talked to Sergeant Danvers. Roy Hazen did have a police record. And nothing much. About eight years ago, he was tried and convicted on a bunco charge in Lima, Ohio. That must have been when he was with the circus. Well, at least now we know he had a little larceny in his heart. Okay, roll it down. Roll it. Coming up is that other angle I told you about, Mr. Jones. Yeah, that's the one. You know, it's the way he checks his watch. I wonder why he did that. In some earlier footage, his right knee seemed to give way. Lost his balance? Who took his film? Uh, Paul Franklin. From where? The eighth floor Whitman building. OK, thanks, Tom. We're all through, Harry. Thanks. Pigeon watching, Barnaby? Hello, Lieutenant. 
Yeah, some of them carry messages. Well, that's how you get your information. You here on the Van Huff robbery? I got one more tenant on this floor to question, a lawyer. What are your thoughts on the connection between the Leaper and the robbery? Well, we were working on that theory, but uh, we can't tie them together. Seems neat. Leaper attracts the crowds, ties up traffic. Your squad car can't get through. I know. Coincidence? So far, unless we can prove otherwise. I don't believe in coincidences. Uh, Mr. Harris? Yes? I'm Lieutenant Hager. Oh, yes, Lieutenant. My secretary told me you'd stop by. I'm sorry I've been so busy. As a matter of fact, I'm on my way right now to... Just one question or two. I have to check everyone on this floor who was here during the time of the burglary. It's just routine. I see. Now, your secretary said that you were in your office from 2 to 5.30 on the afternoon of the burglary? Yes, that's right. Did you step out into the corridor at all during that time? No, I don't think so. Well, that's your office back there on the corner. You had a better view of the Leaper than I did from where I was standing. Barnaby Jones, Peter Harris. Uh, how do you do? do? Well, that's quite possible, Mr. Jones, but I'm not sure where you were standing. Well, uh, did you see him when he first came out on the ledge? No, I didn't. So, do you mind if I come up to your office sometime and take a look with these? No, not at all, not at all. Thank you. Nice to meet you, gentlemen. Got time for a cup of coffee, Barnaby? No, thanks. Got to see a lady about a circus. you, but it's getting more difficult to see you. Yeah. Gee, ain't this great? <laughs> Lost 237 pounds. Lost 200? No, you won't find them around here. <laughs> Same old Barnaby. Imagine, I've known you since you were that big around. Well, they say in every fat person there's a skinny one screaming to get out. <laughs> I screamed and here I am. Uh, that's great, Flo. Oh, I don't know that it is. I miss the circus. Always will. Yeah, it went out of style. Along with the fat lady. Oh, I'm married now. Uh, there's Jack Spratt. <laughs> He's my weight watcher. Hello. You know him? Oh, sure, that's Roy. Roy Hazen, the clown. Gee, he was great. Funny, huh? Oh, more than that, he went high. Hairless? More money in it. A guy like that wouldn't have been afraid of heights. Well, it's not. It's where he lives. Is Roy all right? Roy's dead. Oh, gee, I'm sorry to hear that. What happened? Well. Poor clown. Whoa. Where would a guy like that go to keep in shape? To a gym, I'd imagine. Any particular one? Mike's in Santa Monica. A lot of the refugees from the circus work out there. Thanks, Flo. <laughs> and don't lose any more weight. I may not be able to find you again. <laughs> uh, Barnaby! Heads up! Honey, don't give me that. I'm sorry, sir. Look, first you put me on hold, then you tell me he's not in. Mr. Harris was in earlier, then he left. And I just keep missing him, huh? That's right, sir. Where'd he go? I don't know, sir. I told you, I don't like that smooth talking. Take it easy, Ed. He's crossed us. Uh, it takes time to fence that stuff. He's had time. Ten to one, he's in Mexico right now, living it up big on our money. Just getting out of bed in the morning. <laughs> hey, you know, Roy Hazen, he could do all that stuff. Uh, acrobats, aerialists, funambulists. Funambulists? Yeah, a rope walker. Yeah. Used to string a slack rope from the ceiling, work up high on it. Uh, last couple of weeks, as a matter of fact. Did you ever get any jobs rope walking? 
Oh, yeah, that's why he started working up high again. He had a job with a sportsman show, uh, dancing on a high slack rope. Well, thanks for the information, Mike. Oh, well, say, uh, I don't know, this might be something. Uh, there was this guy came in here right after the sportsman show closed. And he called Roy over and they talked. And that's the last time he worked out here, last time I saw him. Would you recognize the man? Oh, I don't know. They, they were over by the door. Was he uh, thin, fat, short, tall, young, old? Oh, about six feet, uh, early 40s, maybe. Good looking guy. Uh, not a guy that works out. You know, he was an office type, had a, had a briefcase. Thanks. You're a little later, Peter. But we don't worry. At 200% interest, I don't know why you should. That's strictly business. Maybe I should contact Gamblers Anonymous. Oh, don't. Try instead our champagne flight to Las Vegas. There's a free bus trip to Lake Mead. No, thank you. You don't have to gamble, Peter. Take along your tackle. You can fish Lake Mead. <laughs> so fast that it seems like a dream now. No. No, it's more like a nightmare. Yeah, I know. I read the police report. Can you uh, add any more to the description of the two men? Oh, not with those masks they were wearing. Mm -mm. They were both under six feet, though. Yeah. Oh, and, and I think they were in their 20s. I could tell from the way they moved and talked. Miss Temple, I understand that you received a big shipment of stones from Holland the morning of the robbery. Yeah, that's right. Who knew about that shipment? I guess everybody who works at Van Hoff. Oh, Mr. Jones, if you're thinking that this was, um, what is it that the police use that word? An inside job. An inside job. You're wrong. Well, now, tell me, supposing the two people were talking about the ship and the way we are now, and uh, somebody else overheard the conversation. Oh, Mr. Jones, I think I can vouch for the discretion of everyone in this office. What about outsiders? Outsiders? Yeah, maybe uh, somebody that works in your accounting firm, does your books. The accounting firm consists of Mr. Keller, who's been here for uh, over 25 years. What about cleaning people at night? Oh, the files are all locked before we leave. They'd have no way of finding out anything. Lawyer? Retained by the firm? Oh, well, you're welcome to talk to him if you want to. It's right down the hall. What's his name? Peter Harris. Peter Harris? Is there something wrong, Mr. Jones? No. Something's right. Thank you. Los Angeles would go high rise. Mm -hmm. On account of the earthquake. Beginning to look like New York City down here. I liked it better the other way. Adobe. I'm not quite that old. Mr. Harris. Took you up on your offer. Come in, Mr. Jones. Thank you. Say, you really had a grandstand seat, didn't you? Did you notice the way the leaper checked his watch? No. He checked it, and then he moved down to the corner of the building. I thought that was odd. Say, that is a beautiful case. Yeah, thank you. I've never seen one like this before. Yes, I had it made. Unusual lining. Yes, uh, I'm very fond of Paisley. Did you notice the way his knee buckled just before he jumped? No, I didn't. It did. 
I checked it on the TV coverage. Did you know he was a circus performer? No, actually, I never followed the story. Funambulous. How do you like that word? Rope walker. A man like that has absolutely no fear of heights. Look, uh, Mr. Jones, if you've come up here to think out loud, uh, I'm really quite busy. Oh, I'm sorry. Window opens, isn't it? You could have called over to the Leaper, given him some legal advice. I'm going. Thanks for the view. And you sound happy. What happened? Everything's starting to make sense. Have you heard from little Eddie? Well, when a call goes out for the best informant in the business, it doesn't take little Eddie long to answer his inside. Eddie! Hey, Barnaby. Thought she was out in the boondocks, raising turnips. Sometimes I am, but it's uh, not turnips. It's rutabagas, Eddie. Rutabagas. Oh, sorry. They're all roots to me. What'd you find out about Peter Harris? Best lawyer in town. More than that. He, uh, he likes Vegas a lot. That's, uh, what I mean. More like that. I thought so. Got a juicy one for you. Harris dropped 50000 in Vegas five months ago. Had to go and hawk to a so-called loan company to pay his markers. How does he stand with a loan company? Paid up. When? Yesterday. Interest, too? Right. All the juice. Two. Hundred percent. Hundred and fifty thousand. Nice business, huh? Beats raising the rutabagas. Thanks, Eddie. Always wanted to do business with a gentleman farmer. Call me any time, Barnaby.
Sorry to bother you again, Mr. Harris. Your wife let me in. She is an attractive woman. Why, thank you. Say, I like this place. Better than your downtown office. What a magnificent trophy. Bighorn sheep. Vanishing species. Yes, but uh, I shot it years ago, Mr. Jones. Oh, yeah, when shooting was still in style. Huh? Who are you working for, Mr. Jones? The police? No, I have my own business. Private investigation. Oh, I see. You're investigating the robbery for the insurance company. No, I'm investigating a coincidence. Jewel robbery occurred just about the time Roy Hazen fell to his death. Well, I'm a lawyer, Mr. Jones, and I deal in facts, not coincidences. <laughs> That's funny. I know some lawyers who made a fortune turning facts into coincidences. <laughs> I'm not that kind of a lawyer. And you don't like coincidences either. I believe that the jewel thieves were probably waiting for just such an opportunity. Well, anything. That leaper, when he appeared, well, he simply seized upon him. Then you don't see any connection between the leaper and the thieves. Well, I don't see how, Mr. Jones, since the leaper is dead. That's true. Interesting rifle. Telescopic sight. Take down. Neat. Twenty-two long rifle. Steel jacket. Isn't that kind of unusual for game? Makes a small hole, goes right through. You have to get a head or a heart shot. You must be quite a marksman. I used to be. I wonder if you'd excuse me now, Mr. Jones. I have some work to do. Of course. Good day, Mr. Harris. Good day, Mr. Jones. take up too much of his time. I guess he has a lot of things to do before we leave. Going on a trip? Well, why? Going there without swim fins and masks is like going to Palm Springs without a tennis racket. Yeah, I guess you're right. Oh, uh, Miss Harris, uh, you know a man named Roy Hazen? Roy Hazen? No. Why? I thought he was a friend of your husband. I don't think so. I guess I was mistaken. Aloha. I'm afraid I've got some bad news. Like what? Like most of the stuff was too easily traced. The fence wouldn't touch it. I knew you were going to pull something. I'm not pulling anything. I've got 100,000 here. 50 for you and 50 for me. We don't like it. Well, you can take it or leave it. Just answer your questions. Now we're going to go to your place and we're going to take all of it.
Thanks, Jim. I'll have this fabric back in the morning. There's no hurry. Say, I'm sorry the lab didn't have a better report for you, but his knee, the cap and all, was shattered. There was really no way to tell. This may do it. It's a sidewalk concrete, and that's all. What did you hope to find? Traces of steel. The way I figure, Roy Hazen was shot through the knee with a steel jacket bullet. Smashed a kneecap and went on through, and I was trying to prove it. Barnaby, according to the paper, that jewel robbery's been solved. What? And it's a late addition, just arrived. It's a falling out among thieves. It says that two men must have gotten into an argument and shot each other. Three pieces of the Van Hoff heist were found in the apartment. Police theorized the rest of the jewelry had already been fenced. And that clears Peter Harris of the robbery. Pretty neat. Very neat. Got to be something. Where are you going? To be a funambulist. of pigeon. You got your case all wrapped up, Lieutenant? Well, if I did, I wouldn't be retracing my steps to see if I've overlooked anything. Well, I'm afraid all I've got so far is a bunch of loose ends. Or maybe I should say loose threads. What do you mean? These were caught on uh, one of the earrings in Frank Tilden's apartment, part of the Van Hoff loop. Pretty color. What did your lab say about these? Some kind of Italian silk. May I keep these for about an hour? Of course. Thanks, Lieutenant. Yes? Mr. Jones, to see you. Tell him I'm busy. No, uh, no, no, wait a minute. Ask him to come in. Well, Jones, do you find that coincidence you've been after? I like this view. <laughs> yeah. I just saw you out there on the ledge. Find anything? Yes. Yes, I did. And I can't help but admire this case of yours again. It is a beauty. Such fine silk. Oh, Jones, I just don't understand you. I mean, this robbery has been solved. So the papers say. And the, uh, the jumper, the leaper, was a suicide. Yes, but I don't believe all that. What do you believe? That it wasn't a coincidence. That you were the coincidence. <laughs> Wait, Joe. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I don't think so. Send a squad car to 806 Stone Drive in Bel Air. Why, what's 
this wrong. Why are we leaving now instead of in the morning? Go inside and check that we've got everything. Peter. Do it! Jones. What do you want? The police found these threads in Frank Tilden's apartment. They were caught on the back of some jewelry. So? Why tell me? Because it's curious. About an hour ago, I plucked some threads out of the lining of that custom-built briefcase of yours, and they match. The way I figure it, you held out three pieces of jewelry. You took them to Tilden's apartment. Then after you killed your two partners, you planted the jewelry so it would look like they killed each other fighting over the loot. Looks like I figured right. Get up against the car. I'm usually not much of a betting man, Harris, but all the odds you never make it to that airplane this evening. You'll never know one way or another, Jones. Get in the car. Smart not to take that bet after all. I just knew it, and I have you to thank for proving that. But why do you think he got mixed up in a robbery? Well, why do you think he did it? Maybe he was looking for a shortcut to heaven. You? Me? And the way he figured, that took big money. But I thought I had shown him that we didn't need much. When a man loved you, truly loved you, that's sometimes a hard message to get across. Jones. Starring Buddy Epson. Also starring Lee Merriweather. With guest star James Olson. Tonight's episode Catch Me If You Can.
Barnaby. I didn't know who it was at first. You're not working on Saturday, are you? Well, two days rest always makes me feel like a loafer. I'm on my way up to the office, pick up some papers, fly up to San Francisco, wrap up a case. You don't look like you're exactly on the way to go fishing yourself. Haven't got the time. You really take it to this private detective work, haven't you, Eddie? Well, I won't lie to you, Barnaby, and tell you I don't miss the force, but... Well, a man's got to finish what he started, and I'm this close to finishing. You're not still after that butterfly killer. Barnaby, I'm breathing right down his neck. It's just like the department psychiatrist said. He wants to get caught. Eddie. That's why he keeps writing me those notes, to keep me on the track. Well, this time he went too far. One note too many, Barnaby. And I'm going to nail him with it. You know, it's too bad you're so tied up. I had to turn down a case yesterday, been right up your alley. Say, maybe I can still... Thanks, Barnaby. And uh, maybe in a week or so, I'll give you a call. To go fishing. Sounds good. Don't forget it. Right. Yes, operator. I'd like the number for Gene Merrick. M-E-R-R-I-C-K. In West L.A. Brentwood area, I think. I'll be with you in a minute. Four, seven, five, seven. Thank you. Come in. It's about a case. I can't take anything new right now. But I know a good man, Barnaby Jones. I didn't come here to hire a private detective. I came to get one off my back. That last clue I sent you it worries me. I went too far. This typewriter says that you figured it out. You're the one. That's right. And I'm not ready to end the game. Get it, Mary. Oh, thank 
Kevin's. Mary's been asking for you. Barnaby, I'm so glad you're here. I came down from San Francisco as soon as I got Betty's call. Thank you. You knew Eddie so well, Barnaby. We went back a lot of years. I know what people are saying, that everything was going downhill for him lately. But that's not true, not entirely. Maybe he was depressed about his work, but not his life. You too saw the garden. It's beautiful as ever. Eddie worked in the garden Saturday morning, just as he did every Saturday. I saw Eddie Saturday. He was on the way to his office. What did he say? He said he was close to nailing the butterfly killer. He was. And he had reason to be. Why do you say that? It's a feeling I have, Barnaby. You live with a man most of your life, you can sense when things are going right for him. Eddie was on to something. I know it. You know something? I'm inclined to agree with you. I think this time, Eddie was close. Too close. Do you think the killer found out and murdered him? It's a possibility. Barnaby, I have some savings. Find out what really happened. Prove it wasn't suicide. I intend to. But I'm going to hire myself on this one. Just like with Eddie, it's become a personal matter. Didn't they find her body in a vacant lot somewhere? Yes, she'd gone to a costume party the night before, dressed as Madame Butterfly. That's right, I remember. The newspapers picked it up and labeled the murderer the Butterfly Killer. Did you find anything? Yes. Some of those taunting notes the killer sent Eddie when he first took charge of the investigation. I will turn myself in, but I want to watch you cops chase me a little longer. I've changed my mind. She deserved to die. This game is becoming a bore. Catch me if you can. What kind of a man does something like this? A very dangerous one. Eddie must have started this folder last June when he retired from the force. I wonder what became of those notes. When I saw Eddie Saturday, he said that the killer had gone a little too far. He'd send one note too many, and Eddie was going to nail him with it. The killer probably took that note along with the rest of them from this folder. Eddie, let's get all of Eddie's papers together. Take them over to the office. Let's see if we can't find something that resembles an appointment. Mm -hmm. Eddie, did you find a pair of scissors or a knife in there? No. Why? According to the police report, Eddie hung himself with a cord from this lamp. So? What did he cut it with? For if a dedication to duty is the hallmark of a great man, then Edward Lawrence Wheelock sleeps among giants at peace with his final reward. For as much as the spirit of our brother departed hath entered in life immortal, we therefore commit his body to its resting place. May he dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. He's a fine officer, Mary. Mary. Be in touch with you, Mary. Lieutenant. Lieutenant, when your boys went through Eddie's office, did they find a knife or scissors? No, why? I'm just trying to make some sense out of something that's pretty senseless. Barnaby, Mary told me you were looking into Eddie's death. Want some professional advice? That's the best kind. Accept the coroner's verdict, death by suicide. Bury this whole tragic episode right here. This is a good place for it. I wish I could. But I'm afraid to bury the truth. It's got a way of coming back and haunting you.
One hamburger with all the trim coming right up. Oh, Barnaby. What you really need is a good night's sleep. No, what I really need is a crystal ball. I'm trying to make some sense out of this mess. Nothing? As far as I can decipher, Eddie had one appointment all last week with Gene Merrick. Do you know him? He was Eddie's prime suspect in the slaying until Merrick was completely exonerated. I wonder why he went to see Merrick. I almost forgot. A special delivery letter came for you while I was downstairs. Who from? I don't know. There's no return address. What is it? Note. Catch me if you can. Jones. The newspapers said that Eddie Wheelock's death was a suicide. They also predicted rain for today, Mr. Merrick. Well, you realize that Wheelock wasn't one of my favorite human beings. Yeah, according to the reports, he gave you a pretty rough time during the initial investigation. Rough? He got it into his head that I was the butterfly killer. Well, you were the last one known to have seen the girl alive. Look, I only walked her to the car when she left the party, period. According to the reports, you were also having an affair with her, Mr. Merrick, one she intended to break off unless you divorced your wife. Yeah, Wheelock really worked over that little fact, didn't he? Eddie Wheelock was a good cop. He was working on a tough case. He was also a fair cop. He later exonerated you. But my wife didn't. Shortly after the news of my relationship with Linda became known, she filed for divorce. And now I only see my kids on weekends. I'm sorry about that, but you really can't blame Eddie for your indiscretions. He was just after the truth. He wanted to find Linda Barr's killer. Look, I'm a little busy. What do you want to know? Eddie came to see you last week. What about? note or something he got from the killer. Killer said he was at the company costume party the night Linda was murdered. Wheelock wanted to know if I could give him a list of everyone at the party. Could you? Not right away, but my secretary finally gave him one. Any chance you might have a copy? A good one. She's very efficient. I'd like to see it. Here's the list, Mr. Jones. You may keep it if you wish. You're very efficient. You even listed the costumes everyone wore. Well, as best I could. Eddie Wheelock must have asked for this, too. Yes, he did. How did you know? I'm a detective. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, what photographer did you use for the party? We always use the Kenton Studios. Kenton Studio. Thank you. These are to be processed right away, or whatever it is you and your machines do with them. You make it sound like we're one and the same. No. It's just that, well, this is where you spend so much of your time. I don't know how you do it. Computers seem so complicated to me. They puzzle a lot of people. But I like puzzles.
Mr. Jones, you're the second person in two weeks that's asked to see the proofs of that costume party. Was the first one named Eddie Wheelock? Yeah, I believe it was. Said he was investigating that butterfly case. Mr. Kenton, why is this picture smaller than the other, like a piece of it's been cut off? Because it has. Mr. Wheelock asked if he could cut off one of the people in it. Which one? Tell you the truth, I didn't even notice. I just handed him the scissors. Now, these two pictures seem to be the same group. Same group, slightly different angle. Except that uh, this one, there's a tiger missing. You look for yourself. Mr. Wheelock must have cut the tiger off. According to this list, there wasn't even a tiger at the party. Yes, hold on. Any luck on the costume? It seems most companies don't keep records past six months. I'm talking to Mardi Gras costumes right now. Do you think this really might be the killer? Good possibility. I invited guest. Name wasn't on the party list. The police couldn't check him out. And there must be some reason why Eddie wanted this picture. Yes. You do. Well, Mr. Jones will be down in a few minutes to talk to you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Forbes. Right. Bye bye. Mardi Gras has a tiger costume that sounds like the one you're looking for. <laughs> Remember me. I never forget a face or a costume that goes with it. Besides, you're very popular lately. Popular? A man came in last week asking about that tiger suit you rented. He had a picture of it and wanted to know your name. I, uh, I'm not very good at remembering names. So I told him I'd have to check in the back files and I'd get in touch with him later. Did you ever get back to him? I've been calling him for the last few days, but his line's disconnected. And just a few minutes ago, a woman phoned, calling about the same thing. She said a Mr. Jones was going to stop by to see me. The woman that called, did you give her my name? I just told her we had a tiger costume like the one she described. Where's the rental card now? Right here in the desk. Here it is. Stone, Mr. Randall Stone. What's it all about, anyway? You wouldn't understand. But you must believe I'm sorry. Sorry about what? That you've become part of the game. I... I... I don't understand. Please! Don't! Please! Please! No! 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 Excuse me, uh, I'm looking for Mrs. Forbes. Oh, she's probably on her lunch break. Take the elevator to the fourth floor and just call out. Thank you. Hey, 
Miss Forbes, you hear Miss Forbes? Miss Forbes. It's on the table. I didn't come up for that reason, Randall. But as long as I'm here, I'll just uh, take the check, and you can use the envelope for something else. You were up early this morning, Randall. I heard you go out and get the newspaper. <sighs> Guess you couldn't sleep, huh? <laughs> I know how that is. Believe me, ever since my husband died, I find it harder and harder to sleep at night. I think it has something to do with being alone so much of the time. Don't you, Randall? I mean, we're both alone so much. I'm late for work, Stella. Oh, I see you've already done today's crossword puzzle. Amazing how fast you do them. I bet it's because you used to know all about those different languages from when you taught at Carl. Randall, did you read about the murder? At the Mardi Gras Costume Company. Oh, poor woman. I bet some creep just probably felt like killing somebody and she was around. And do you know? I bet he's just some normal-looking guy you wouldn't even look at twice. The type that fades into the woodwork. Don't you think so, Randall? Re oh. I told you I'm late for work, Stella. Yeah. Sure. I'll, uh... I'll let you get ready, Randall. See you. Oh, well, as well as can be expected, I guess. The reality of her being alone is just now getting to her, I think. Oh, there wasn't much mail forward to Pometti's office except for a few advertisements in this bill from the Apex typewriter company. For one Greek key typewriter? <laughs> I thought it was kind of strange. Sure is. Mary know anything about that? Remember seeing any typewriter in Eddie's office besides that uh, standard portable here? No. Neither do I. Why would Eddie want a typewriter with a Greek keyboard? It's a good question. Be surprised how beat up some of these things get when you let them out. Sometimes I think I'm renting to elephants. Anything I can do for you? Yes, sir. 
Did you uh, rent this machine? Yeah, about a week ago. You returning it? No, I'm Barnaby Jones, a private investigator, and my problem is that I want to figure out what Mr. Wheelock wanted with a Greek typewriter. You don't handle many of those, do you? Try to make my living off Greek typewriters. I'd be on welfare right now. Did he happen to mention what he wanted with it? I don't... Oh, yeah. I remember now he said something about he had to translate a note that was written in Greek. Translate on a typewriter? It's exactly what I said. As a matter of fact, I suggested to him that he take the note to somebody who spoke Greek. And he said he already did that. I had no choice except to fall back on the old businessman's creed. What's that? Never argue with a customer. I read in him the typewriter. Thanks. Young ones, Barnaby, are not like their mothers who came from the old country. You gotta give them credit for trying. You got a point there. All right, all right, you convinced me. Be here at 8 o'clock tonight. Oh, thank you. Isn't that wonderful? Sad thing about your friend Eddie Wheelock. Yes, that's what I came to talk to you about, Achilles. Uh, Eddie he stopped by to see you recently, didn't he? Just last week. Something about a message in Greek? That's right. He wanted me to translate it for him. Did you? Barnaby, when I was a young man in the old country, I was always moving around from place to place, and not always by choice, mind you. But in my travel, I thought I must set every Greek dialect known to man until I saw Eddie's note. There was no way on earth for me to translate. What was the difficulty? The difficulty, my old friend, was that it didn't make sense. The letters were Greek, all right, but they didn't spell anything. Just so much, how do you say it? Mumbo mumbo? Mumbo jumbo. Yeah, mumbo jumbo. And nothing more. Eddie told me to keep trying, and then he left. You still have the note? Well, he left me a copy. I've been showing it to some of my friends, but... Barnaby, believe me, Mumbo Jumbo. still be there in the morning. And you'll be a lot fresher, too. I 
got to keep at it, Betty. I'm so close. Barnaby, didn't you get back to any of these people yet? Where would I get the time? Well, this Mr. Jensen called three times. He, he needs your help. He said it was very I'll important. I'll get back to him in the morning. Sorry, Betty. Don't you see what's happening to you, Barnaby? You're becoming as obsessed with this case as Eddie was. He couldn't think of anything else either. Yeah, you're right. See if you can get Jensen. Oh, it's his office phone. I'm not sure he's there yet. No. Come here, quick. I think I've got it. What does it say? I don't know. It's all Greek to me. Betty Jones. It's a code. A killer's own personal code. You see, this note was typed on a Greek typewriter, but the words are really in English. All the killer did was to substitute a Greek character for an English letter. Look at the two keyboards. Keys are laid out the same. Now, all we have to do is reverse the procedure and hit the equivalent of the Greek letter on the American machine. Now, here is the first letter. Give me a couple of minutes and I have this thing translated. Do you think Eddie broke the code too? I'm almost positive he did. And that's why he was killed. In some ways, it's like opening Pandora's box. What does it say? I worked with the butterfly. Good reason to believe the killer works here, Mr. Merrick, and possibly still does. Well, then, Mr. Jones, obviously the police would have checked him out at the time of the murder. Not necessarily. The police only checked out the people who went to the costume party. Oh, but that was everyone who worked here, Mr. Jones. It was a company party at the Pavilion Hotel. Everyone was invited. I know for a fact that everyone came. No one was uh, left off this guest list for any reason? Not that I can think of. Did you see anyone at the party dressed in a tiger costume? Oh, come on, Mr. Jones. It's been almost a year. And besides, I'm the wrong person to ask about that. Why? Because I only stayed at the party for about an hour or so. Did you get sick? <laughs> Not me, Randall Stone. Who's Randall Stone? He works in the computer room. I don't find his name on the guest list. That's right. I forgot. Randall wasn't invited because he was working the night shift then. I just saw no reason to send him an invitation. But he got sick the night of the party. 
Yes, and I had to come back here to find someone to take his place, which wasn't easy on such short notice. Where's Randall Stone now? In the computer room, I imagine. I'll find out for you. Randall Stone. What do you know about Randall Stone? Oh, not much, really. He knows his business, but he keeps pretty much to himself. Just one of those people that nobody seems to pay any attention to. Oh? Thank you. Well, isn't that a coincidence? What? Randall called in sick today, too. What's his address? Good morning. Can I help you? Is Mr. Jones here? No, I'm sorry he isn't. Would you like to leave your name and number? Is it all right if I wait? Well, I'm not sure when he'll be returning. It's very important. Certainly. Have a seat. under normal circumstances. Normal circumstances? Dear Randall hadn't been so rude to me lately. Listen, private detective or no private detective, I don't believe in spying on my tenants. What are you looking for, anyway? For what may be the final piece of a puzzle. Oh, well, you've come to the right place. Randall's always solving puzzles. I have a feeling he's also good at creating puzzles. Sorry, my father-in-law isn't back yet, and I've got a lunch date. I'm going to have to close the office, so if you'll leave your name and number, I'll have him call you when he gets back. I said I'd wait. Now, look, I, uh... I think we'd better go in there. We'll wait together. Why don't you say something? Anything. Don't you want to know who I am? Or do you know already? I have an idea. <laughs> you know all right. That's why you're so quiet. understand why anyone kills. <laughs> because she was so beautiful and I wanted her so much. But she was a T. 
keys. You know what I mean. She used to make me think that she cared for me. She'd smile at me. Come in my office sometimes and talk. And that's why I had to be at that costume party with her. She was always surrounded by her friends. So I waited until she left. And I followed her home. And I thought she was going to be happy to see me. She was angry. And she said terrible things to me. She called me a creep. Started laughing and kept on laughing until there was only one way that I could stop her. Betty, I found a missing piece. I know who the butterfly killer is. It's a shame that information won't do you any good, Mr. Jones. You must be Randall Stone. That's right. Well, if you've decided it's time to kill me the way you killed Eddie Wheelock, you're too late. I've already talked to the police. They have your name. They're out looking for you now. I don't believe you. Talk to your landlady, Stella. I used the phone in your apartment. It's all over, Stone. It's just a matter of time. Time can be to my advantage, especially with her as a hostage. Your gun. Take it out. Put it on the desk. Slowly. Now turn around. What do you hope to gain by this? I'm just not ready to spend the rest of my life in jail. Come on. You heard her. Now, you just sit tight, Jones. Don't try to follow us and don't pick up the phone. Not if you ever want to see her alive again. in the parking lot. Act normal. You'll never get away with this. For your sake, you better hope I do.
slide over on the other side. You're going to drive. Go on. Guns aren't loaded, Stone. I don't go around with a loaded gun, but I don't think I'm going to use it. Got the shells right here in my pocket. You want to see them? Barnaby! Stand right where you are. Put your hands up. I thought you said it wasn't loaded. Back where I come from, they'd say you'd been flim-flam. a gardener yourself. You know, when I was a boy, my father used to say the three things that make a good gardener. Sharp tools, rich soil, and an occasional glass of cold lemonade while you're working. He knew what he was talking about. Oh, wait till you see what we're having for lunch. Baked ham, sweet potatoes, and fresh corn. You didn't have to go to all that trouble. It's no trouble. I like having both of you here. You're gonna be all right, Mary. Yes. Even though it doesn't bring Eddie back, it helps knowing the truth about how he died. Thanks, Barnaby. Lunch will be ready soon. I'll help you with the table. Yes, sir. He really knew what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. 